Here I'm going to discuss Open Mandriva LX 3.0 with the KDE Plasma 5.6.5 desktop. First, a little history. Open Mandriva is a successor to Mandriva Linux, which began life in France as Mandrake in 1998, founded by Gail Duval. The first release was a fork of Red Hat Linux. It had a KDE-1 desktop and used the RPM management system developed by Red Hat. Later, it diverged from Red Hat but retains the RPM system. In 2002, it was number one in the DistroWatch page hit rankings and remained number one in 2003 and 2004. In 2004, it lost a trademark suit and changed its name to Mandrake Linux, one word. In 2005, it acquired Connectiva of Brazil and changed its name to Mandriva Linux. That year, Ubuntu displaced it as number one in the DistroWatch rankings. Note that Red Hat changed the name of its free desktop edition to Fedora. In 2006, the company began having financial problems and laid off its founder. It dropped to number five in the DistroWatch rankings. In 2007, it dropped to number nine, while PC Linux OS, a fork of Mandriva, founded four years earlier, shot up to number two. In 2008, it rose to number seven, while Linux Mint rose to number three. In 2009, it rose to number six, as PC Linux OS dropped. However, Mandriva continued to have financial problems, and in 2010, it was forced to reorganize and laid off much of its staff. It dropped to number seven. In 2011, it released its final version, dropping to number 10 as Mint became number one. The staff who had been laid off in 2010 formed Magia, which in 2012 became number two, where it stayed for several months. The remaining staff that had been laid off in 2011 joined with the Mandriva community to produce Open Mandriva, which was first released in 2013. In 2010, the Russian company that produces Rosa Linux tried to save Mandriva and helped produce its final release in 2011. Rosa now maintains a fork of Mandriva, and Open Mandriva is partially based on Rosa. This is Open Mandriva LX 3.0. I've already changed things a little bit. I made the bottom panel a little bit smaller. It was about a half inch high. That's too much for my taste. And I've taken the icons off the desktop. The other thing is that in order to record with simple screen recorder, I had to get rid of all the fancy graphic effects, all of them and I even turned the compositor off completely. But now, Simple Screen Recorder works. The good part is that I was able to get Simple Screen Recorder from the Open Mandriva repositories. But it took a little doing. There are three ways of getting software in Open Mandriva. first way, which they don't recommend and which I don't recommend, is the KDE Discover Graphic Package Manager. The fact is, at least for the moment, it simply doesn't work in Open Mandriva. It loads, as you can see, 
but try getting some software. It doesn't appear, so you can scratch discover off your list. Another way is the software installer. Install and remove software. This is something like Synaptic Package Manager or something like the Yum Extender in Fedora. Now here you can find software I've already installed LibreCAD with this system. As you can see, it's already installed. I found a simple screen recorder here also, but I was unable to install it. When I press enter, nothing happens. Yet I know it's there because I installed it. What I had to do to get it is the third method using the URPMI command sudo URPMI Simple screen recorder. Press enter. Enter my password. Press enter again. Now they say it's already installed. They call it SSR-0.3.6-1, etc., etc., etc. Tools, System Tools, Configure Your Computer. This is the Open Mandriva control center. Here under software management you can install or remove software. We just looked at that. Update your system. Configure media sources. Let me just look at that for a moment. How can I configure them? Well, I can check and uncheck which ones are enabled. But it doesn't tell you much about each one. To get that information, you have to go to Edit and you find a URL. problem is there's only one choice here. I don't know how to pick a different mirror. I may eventually learn how to do that. Now under hardware we can browse and configure hardware, configure sound, set up a graphical server, Set up the keyboard layout, we've already done that. Set up the pointer device, 
set up printers, set up scanners, and under others, set up a UPS for power monitoring. Network and internet, it has a network center. I don't need it right now. The network manager worked okay. Set up a new network interface, remove a connection, set up a proxy, share the internet connection with other local machines, manage different network profiles, configure a VPN connection, virtual private network. These are host definitions. Won't go into that now. Under system, we can change the authentication procedure, manage system services. There are dozens of them. Don't manage them unless you know what you're doing. Manage, add, and remove fonts, import windows, trademark fonts, manage date and time, manage localization, open a console as administrator, manage users on the system, import Windows trademark documents and settings, and take snapshots of your system at various points. Under Network Sharing, you can access Windows shared drives and directories, share drive and directories with Windows, configure NFS shares, share drives and directories using NFS, your web DAV shares. I'm not familiar with that, so I don't even want to go into it. Local disks, you can manage your disk partitions. Don't do it unless you know what you're doing. You can set up a CD or DV burner. Share your hard disk partitions. Under security, you can set up your personal firewall. Configure authentication for open memory but tools. Advanced setup for network interfaces and firewall, and under boot you can set up the display manager. Without going into any of those in detail, there's a lot there to digest, and that's the Open Mandriva Control Center. Now at the opposite end, at the bottom here, we have system settings, and this is the KDE Control Center. Now I went over this in some detail in my review of Kubuntu 16.04, so I'm not going to belabor the point here, except that there's an enormous number of ways the system can be tweaked. One of the things I did was to get rid of all of the graphic effects, including the compositor, and it took a look at several of these sections in order to do it. The other problem I ran into that I just want to mention briefly is that the system was shutting off the desktop and locking the screen about every five minutes. Normally the way to get out of that is with the power management utility. I tried to do that. By the way, you have to double click on these. Uh, I turned everything off hoping that would help, and it didn't help at all. And I see some of these things have come back on again. Now, another thing I looked for was the screensaver. And here that is. That's another thing that will lock your screen, but I disabled it, so that shouldn't be the problem. Finally, I got exasperated and I looked, I searched for the word lock, and I found that there's a screen locking utility. So I got that and it said lock screen automatically after five minutes, so I unchecked that and that did the trick. So I had to go to three separate places to keep my screen from turning off. Now I don't want to go through all of the applications here, recent documents, etc., etc., etc. 
want to mention under Office, you have the LibreOffice meta package up here with all the different versions of LibreOffice. But under More down here, you have specific applications like LibreOffice Calc, LibreOffice Draw, LibreOffice Impress, LibreOffice Writer. So you can get to them. So you can get to them for either one of these. So you can get to them from either one of these settings. Under graphics, it came with Gwenview, Krita, etc. It didn't come with GIMP. GIMP can be downloaded very easily, though. I downloaded LibreCAD from the software manager just to make sure that it worked, and it did. ScanLite, which is their scanning utility, was included. Under sound and video, Caden Live was included. Pulse Audio Volume Control was included. I downloaded Simple Screen Recorder from the terminal, as I mentioned, and the VLC Media Player was included. Under Tools, I just want to mention one thing. There's the KDE Console with a K terminal emulator here, but there's also a Q terminal drop down and a Q terminal. And as you saw under the open mandry of a control center, you can open a console as the administrator. Just want to mention a couple of things here. I frequently use the top utility see my system resources and this is a little more elaborate version of them it has this graphical representation at the top now there's another one that comes included with Open Mandriva 3.0, and that is HTOP. And that's slightly different. It shows that I'm using 936 megabytes of my memory. And remember, I have simple screen recorder going. That's using most of that. A zero swap, however. Now, as I said, I'm not going to go into the KDE desktop as I did that in Kubuntu 16.04. This is version 5.6.5. That was version 5.5. There's not an enormous amount of difference that you could see right off the bat. But you have the same panel options. You can add widgets, add a panel, lock the widgets, move the panel around, there's a lot of things you can do. It's the same old KDE. So that's my brief look at Open Mandriva LX 3.0. This is XRAM Tech. Thanks for watching.